Are you looking for the best electric scooters for college students? In this video we will look at some of the best electric scooters for college students on the market. Before we get started with our video. We have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Starting at number 1. Gotrax XR Elite Electric Scooter. The Gotrax XR Elite is a performance-focused scooter that offers great speed and solid battery life at the cost of a few luxury features. The main reason you'll be interested in this scooter is its 300-watt motor, which gives it significantly more pep than previous-gen scooters that run on 250 watts. The scooter runs in two gears, this electric scooter obviously does not have a transmission. Gear 1 is Eco Mode, which caps out at 10 mph and saves power for longer rides. Gear 2 caps out at 15.5 mph and is ideal for short commutes. The XR Elite has two 8.5-inch air-filled tires that provide some light shock absorption but this scooter is definitely not meant for off-roading. The tires will need to be replaced after a few years of riding, so if you are intimidated by maintenance then you may want to consider a scooter with solid rubber tires instead. The XR Elite uses both an electric ABS brake in the front and a manual disc brake in the rear to provide some very quick braking. The electric brake is very sensitive, though, so it does take some getting used to. They are activated by a brake lever and they use regenerative braking to send power back to the battery. The battery life is another strong point of the scooter, with Gotrax advertising a max 18.6 miles of travel off of one charge. In reality, this figure will vary a lot based on road conditions, rider weight, and weather. It charges in about 4-6 to six hours and you can easily track the remaining charge with the onboard LED display panel. The XR Elite has basic front and rear LEDs and lots of reflective stickers to help with visibility but you should probably invest in an additional light source if you wish to ride safely at night. And while we're on the subject, I would like to point out that the power button, which you single press to turn on the lights and hold for 5 seconds to change gears, is placed so awkwardly that you have to pull over to turn them on. It is certainly an odd choice. But it is these minor gripes that set the XR Elite back. None of them alone are deal breakers but together they make it clear how this scooter is able to offer so much horsepower at this price range. If I could change one thing about it I would definitely opt for more comfortable handlebars. But that said, the scooter itself is well built as its aluminum frame is sturdy and IP54 rated for water resistance. It also folds up nicely despite weighing quite a bit. It might not be a luxurious ride but the XR Elite packs some serious value at an impressive price point. At Number 2. Segway 9Bot Kick Scooter ES2. Robotics company 9Bot is an absolute juggernaut when it comes to personal transportation devices. Not only does 9Bot own the Segway brand, but they also provide their electric motors to numerous competitors. You'll even find their hardware in the Xiaomi M365, another e-scooter reviewed on this list. Most of 9Bot scooters are well outside of the target budget of this roundup but their Segway 9Bot Kick Scooter ES2 is pretty much in the ballpark. It forgoes some premium features but makes up for it with pure performance. The ES2 uses a front shock absorber to make for a smooth ride when crossing rough terrain. This e-scooter has solid rubber tires, which are maintenance-free though typically less shock absorbing. The front shock pad helps make up for this. The front tire is 8 inches and the rear tire is 7.5 inches. The ES2 has zippier acceleration than we saw from other scooters because of its 300-watt motor. If you want the max performance, you'll want to put the scooter into sport mode, which sacrifices some of its 60-minute battery life for improved acceleration. It won't go faster than 15.5 miles per hour in either sport or normal mode, but if you want it to go slower you can set a manual limit in beginner mode by setting it up through the app. Segway does make an expansion battery, which increases the max speed to 18.6 miles per hour. It also, unfortunately, breaks the bank. If performance is important enough for you to consider that, though, you'll also want to be aware of the max payload, max rider weight, which is 220 pounds. Unfortunately, that is my exact weight. The more you weigh the harder the motor has to work regardless of the size of its battery. There's simply no cheating the laws of physics. This scooter has a decent battery life, though, allowing you to get an average 15 miles of travel distance from one charge in normal mode. 
The battery pack improves the max travel distance to 28 miles. The ES2 has an electric ABS brake on its front wheel that uses regenerative braking to convert kinetic energy back into charge for the battery. This helps you to get even more ride time if you are riding downhill. The electric anti-lock front brake is smooth and responsive, but the ES2 does not have a cable disc brake for its rear wheel. Instead, you have an old-fashioned manual brake to stomp on if you need to come to a sudden stop. Most will prefer the disc brake, but the manual stomp brake gets the job done. Most parts of the ES2 feel well-built except for the low-quality foam handlebars. Those can be easily replaced if you don't like them, of course. Because of the way the front post folds down for transport, this scooter feels just a bit more compact than other models. It is also a few pounds lighter and a bit lower to the ground. Another minor complaint is that this scooter doesn't have a rear LED light, making it harder to spot from behind. Its front LED headlight is decently bright, though. All negatives aside, there are a number of compelling reasons to go with 9Bot's ES2 scooter over the competition. But it should also be noted that Segway also makes the hoverboard-style Mini Pro, which is an equally viable option for a last-mile commuter device. You can find a review of that device in our roundup of the best hoverboards. At Number 3. Razer EcoSmart Metro Electric Scooter Some may write off the EcoSmart Metro preemptively because it is made by Razer, the same company that kick-started the push scooter fad of the 90s. Well, Razer actually makes many high-quality e-scooters and the EcoSmart Metro should be at the top of your list if you are looking for an inexpensive scooter with a seat. The cushion seat post is the standout feature of the EcoSmart Metro, as it makes longer rides much more comfortable. The seat post also houses a detachable rear fender and luggage rack. The rack is great for carrying a few school books or a bag of groceries. The wide foot pad makes it easy to sit however you find most comfortable. Because the EcoSmart Metro has tall 16-inch pneumatic tires and positions the driver facing forward, it almost looks more like a compact e-bike than an e-scooter. However, its lack of pedals and slower acceleration really make it apparent that this is still a scooter when you ride it. Even with a stronger 500-watt motor, the EcoSmart Metro is sluggish to accelerate because its frame is weighed down by large lead-acid batteries. It does reach an impressive 18 miles per hour top speed, but it takes a few seconds to get there and struggles to climb hills just like a smaller scooter would. Its air-filled tires make for a decently smooth ride, but a shock absorber on the seat post would be a very nice upgrade. The scooter has a variable speed throttle control, which makes it easy to maintain a slower speed while you navigate a crowd. Its rear disc brake is connected to a cable lever on the handlebar, but no front brake. Consequentially, the EcoSmart Metro won't stop as quick as scooters with two brakes. This scooter's power switch is found under the foot pad near the batteries. It only has a primitive battery status indicator, which simply lights up when you need a charge. The battery is good for around 40 minutes of go time, which is enough for a couple of short rides. The biggest shortcoming of this scooter is that it charges back up incredibly slowly. The manual says to charge for up to 12 hours and a max of 24 hours for the best battery health. You can keep riding day to day with just a few hours of charging here and there, but in the long run, this will negatively impact its battery life. If you can work around the EcoSmart Metro's slow charging and bulky design, it is a capable city commuter that has the unique privilege of being the only seated electric scooter available for under $500. At Number 4. Razer E Prime Electric Scooter the E-Prime electric scooter is Razer's newest addition to the electric scooter game. It is cheap enough to make for an awesome Christmas present while looking professional enough to ride it to the office. The Razer E-Prime looks and feels durable with its gunmetal aluminum frame. It folds easily for storage and has a decent kickstand when you just need to dismount for a moment. It is lighter than most other e-scooters at 21 pounds but it is still far from easy to carry around. More likely, you'll be almost exclusively riding around on the E-Prime's 2.8-inch airless honeycomb tires. These tires handle bumps poorly but are lower maintenance than pneumatic tires. The front tire is extra wide which helps for a little grip on the road. This scooter reaches a max speed of 15 miles per hour, which is fairly standard for scooters in this price range. The Razer E-Prime has a standard 250-watt motor, so don't count on it to climb anything higher than 15 degrees without some serious leg pushing. 
One difference between this scooter and others we reviewed is that there is no beginner mode to limit the max speed. It is easy enough to keep a slower speed just using the variable speed thumb knob accelerator on the right handlebar but amateur riders may be uncomfortable nonetheless. The E-Prime has an electric ABS brake on the left handlebar but no regenerative braking. Backup braking is handled by a foot stomp brake, which isn't as fancy as a disc brake but it gets the job done in a pinch. One thing that several users described is that the scooter slows down when the battery gets more than half empty, so it is a good idea to charge it up before every use. The Razer E-Prime gets about 40 minutes of battery life in optimal conditions and it has a 5-stage LED battery indicator display so you can easily track your remaining charge. The LED indicator is next to the power button just above the footplate. The scooter charges in around 5 hours. The battery life is decent but it is definitely an oversight that this scooter doesn't have any built-in lights. If you want to safely ride this scooter at night, you need extra lights. Daytime riding feels safe and comfortable, though, as the scooter has nice cushion handlebars and a large rider deck. This feature light scooter is far from perfect but its value price and solid build quality make it a great choice for short trips to the corner store or sidewalk commuting. At Number 5. Swigtrin Swagger 5T Electric Scooter The Swigtrin Swagger 5T scooter might have the most embarrassing branding on the market, but this OEM clone of the Xiaomi Mi M365 holds its own against the original. In a few key respects, it even outperforms it. One of the main ways it outperforms the M356 is its price point. The Swagger 5 is an incredible value, especially since it performs about as well as the industry-standard Xiaomi M365. The Swagger 5T weighs a fairly average 27.5 pounds and its front post folds down so you can carry this scooter up a flight or stairs or bring it on board a train. It is made of durable aerospace-grade aluminum and feels about as sturdy as branded models from Bird and Spin. Its whole design is very user-friendly and provides the rider with every tool they need to navigate a longer commute. The Swagger 5 is equipped with front and rear LED lights plus reflectors on the side, making it safe to ride at night. It comes with a bell, a phone mount, and a water bottle holder, all of which can really enhance the comfort of your ride. All of the controls you need are conveniently located on the handlebar, right next to an LED display that shows your current speed, gear, and battery status. The power button can be used to turn the scooter on and off, as well as toggle the LED lights and change gears. You can also mount your phone on the handlebar and use the free Swagger app to get more detailed information about your trip stats, battery status, and riding mode. When it comes to how the Swagger 5T rides, there are a lot of factors that will affect its performance, so take my figures with a grain of salt and keep in mind that the max rider weight is technically 220 pounds. Even if you meet or exceed this weight figure, the Swagger 5T is still a fun ride, but keep in mind that it will have limited performance and travel distance. Even if you are fairly light, the Swagger 5T doesn't have very robust acceleration. However, once it does get going it is quite zippy. It has a max speed of 18 miles per hour, which is an improvement over the Xiaomi M365, and about the most you could reasonably expect from a 250 watt motor. Using the app or by double pressing the power button, you can shift between three different riding modes called gears. Note that these aren't literally gears, as electric devices don't have transmission systems. Instead, think of it as an electronic power limiter. The lowest gear, Eco Mode, will have the least strain on the battery but also the lowest max speed. The middle mode is better for beginner riders. Unless you need to, you'll probably want to stick to the fastest mode, as speed is a major perk of this scooter. The Swagger 5T has large 8.5-inch tires that offer decent ground clearance for navigating curbs and other bumps. The front wheel is air-filled while the back wheel sports an airless honeycomb design. This means you'll have improved shock absorption on the front while only having to worry about replacing the much more accessible wheel in the case of a flat. I appreciate that Swagtron made an effort to keep users from having to remove the rear tire, which is much more difficult to remove because of the disc brakes. However, many users reported that their scooter did not come with an air valve extender, which is necessary for keeping your front tire at the optimum 28 PSI. This e-scooter has both a front electric ABS brake and a rear disc brake. The combination of the two makes for a fast and smooth braking experience that won't skid or lock your tires up. 
The rear brake is controlled by a cable lever on the left side of the handlebars, while the front brake automatically kicks in to provide regenerative braking when you are going downhill. Regenerative braking turns your excess kinetic energy back into power for the battery, extending the Swagger 5TS battery life beyond its 50-minute rating. This battery rating is calculated using optimal conditions, so realistically, you probably won't get anywhere close to the max travel distance rating of 12 miles. However, the battery life is still up to standards with other scooters in this price range. Flaws aside, the Swagger 5T is one of the best deals you'll find on an electric scooter under $500. It is almost as high quality as the rentable scooters you may have encountered before, but several hundred dollars cheaper to own.